Hello, this is John, and I'll be showing you how to set up port forwarding. Setting up port forwarding can be quite a long and sometimes difficult process, and there may be some hurdles along the way, but I hope this guide will help you out. The first step is finding out what the router's address is on the network. The easiest way is to have the person you're assisting, or if you're going to find out what yours is, go ahead and click in this search bar area, or if you're running Windows XP, there will be a run command. And in this box, or in the run box, you would put CMD, and then push enter. Now once you get this black box, you're going to want to type in IPCONFIG, and then hit enter. And now we're going to get a bunch of numbers here that are going to tell us uh, what our IP address is and what the IP address is of the router. The one that we need to pay attention to is the gateway right here, which is 192.168.1.1. This can also be a 10 address or any other kind of addresses that anyone has set up. Uh, if you just want to write this gateway down, because we're going to need it to find out what our router is, is our next step. So what you'd want to do is open up a browser and type in that address that we just took down, 192.168.1.1. And here you'll get a prompt that says usually has the name of the router in it right here minus WRT 54G which is a, a Linksys router a wireless router um, with this information we can now search Google and we can find out what we need to put here for the password and possibly a username so what you would want to do is go ahead and type in WRT 54G like I have above and then type default password And then you're going to have to go through possibly a few links before you find out what the actual password is for your router. For this one, you can see that the username is blank and the default password is admin. Mine, however, I changed for added security, but it still works the same way. If finding the router name wasn't as easy as it was for me, uh, you can always go ahead and have the person walk up to the router and then they can look at it for a model number. Uh, usually it's either on the top or underneath. It'll have a small badge. Other options for a uh, default password and username are sometimes the username will be admin and the password would be password. But it all changes from case to case. If the person is running a custom password like I am on my router, then you would need to have them push the reset button that is usually located on the back of the physical router. Uh, it's usually near the WAN port. As you can see on mine, it's right next to the WAN port and needs to be depressed with a, with a pen or a pencil and it needs to be held in for five seconds and the way you can tell that it's been reset usually is all the lights on the front will go off and then they will come back on and then that will indicate that all the settings have been returned to stock. If the person that you're trying to help is having trouble locating the reset button you can always type in the name of the router again and then you just do reset button location and then go ahead to an image search and you'll get all get all sorts of shots of the backs of routers or manual pictures so this will also help you if you can't find it what I'm gonna have you do next is type in the 192 address we used earlier it's 192 dot one sixty eight dot one dot one and then this is the prompt that we got earlier that we needed a username and password for now that we know what it is you can fill it in in my case the username is blank and the password I have a custom one so I'm gonna leave mine there and now this is the the first page that you come to when you log in on a router its internal configuration at this point you can have the user read to you what options are available or if you're in there yourself you'll be able to see everything that's here on my router the section for port forwarding is called applications and gaming and in here it'll also call it port range forwarding it can have a number of different names uh, sometimes it's not this easy to find port forwarding so there are some websites we can use to help us out the website I'm gonna have you visit is screenshots .portforward.com. Here you can find almost any router in alphabetical order.
And just as an example, we're going to go ahead and find my router. It's a Linksys. And it's a WRT54G. And right here is the port forwarding. It's usually labeled, so you can find them easily. And as I mentioned earlier, you should be able to find any port forwarding information you need on this website. Now that we have the information that we need, we can start making changes on the router. So now we need to type in our gateway address again, which is 192.168.1.1. Here we're going to be reusing the same information that we obtained earlier. The password would usually be admin in my case, but I have a custom one, so I'm leaving it there. Now we're back on the internal configuration again, and we'll go to Applications and Gaming. And here's where we can start covering the ports that we want to forward for Tight VNC and Microsoft's remote tool. For the first spot that we'll fill in, we'll go with Tight VNC. And you can name this anything you want. You can just name it plain VNC if you want. And the range that I like to cover that works really well for me is 59677 to 59677. That way only one port is open for this particular computer. It's going to cover both protocols. And the next spot is for the IP address of the machine. If you're setting it up for yourself like I am, you can go down here and we can do CMD again. And do IP config. And this number right here under the IPv4 address is my address for my machine. So this is the number that I'm going to use here. And if you have this checkbox for enable, you have to make sure that it's enabled, otherwise this will not work. And now the next spot we're going to be covering is for Microsoft's remote tool. So I'm going to fill in RDP. And it uses the range of 3389 to 3389. And again, we're going to use 105 here and click enable. Now that we have both in here, I'm going to hit click save to make sure all these settings get onto my router. Now that these settings are saved, we can hopefully connect to a machine. But first you usually need the modem's IP address, which can kind of be challenging to find at times. Luckily, there's a website that can do this for us. The site that we're going to use is whatismyip.org. And this will display your modem's address because we do not need the address of the actual computers like the 192's or the 10 addresses because those are not connectable from an outside network. From an outside network you would need the modem's address and this would be mine. So in my case I would tell someone this address in order to get a connection from them or if I'm going to try to connect to my computer from far away this is the address that I would be using and it would be contacting my router which would then say okay 105 has an open port so we can allow the connection. Now you can hopefully establish a connection using VNC or Microsoft's remote desktop application. However, you may still run into issues and if you do you may want to try using a program that does not require port forwarding such as TeamViewer or AMYY. You can also view guides for those applications on this YouTube channel as well. At this time I would like to wrap up this demonstration on port forwarding. I hope this guide and my links will help you successfully set up port forwarding. Thank you for watching. Good night.